I'm obviously sitting outside my house against the wall looking at the garden and one of the things that's remarkable to me about the garden which I love so much get so much peace and joy from not just the hens and the tortoise and all the parrots that fly over and all the the birds that come during a given day and the deer and the raccoons and even the dreaded ground squirrels but what I love is seeing how everything is flourishing and what's frustrating to me is that I've lived in this house for nine years. I've had fruit trees here since the day we moved in. That was one of the first things I planted. And none of them flourished. None of them thrived. They were they remained narrow branch trees, small branch trees that never bore fruit. Until I brought on somebody who helped me and somehow everything is flourishing. Everything in my garden, and I mean everything, is green and flowering and if it's meant to produce fruit, it's producing fruit. And I think, well, what's the difference? I had water and I had fertilizer and I had a lot of energy that went into it and investment that I put into it. But the difference was being taught, having somebody else come who actually knows how to nourish plants who actually has knowledge about how to do it better. And I think sometimes we go in our lives that way. We say, leave me alone, I know what I'm doing. But in fact, people around us go, but you don't. You're not flourishing, you're withering. So sometimes we have to go against our instinct of self-isolation, of self-quarantining of a sort, which is to listen and say, well, what could I be doing differently? To seek the counsel of smart and wise and loving people around us and to ask them, what do you see in the patterns of my life right now during coronavirus, during this period of quarantine and all the, the discomfort that's coming with it? And what is it that you're noticing about me that maybe you're desperate to tell me but think I wouldn't be able to hear? We need to water it more frequently. We need to water it less. We need to fertilize it more. We need to trim it then. All these things that apply to plants, there's an aspect of that that applies to who we are as well. I remember one of the things that uh, somebody told me was, it's not that you can't keep your plants alive because you don't water them enough. We water everything too much. We need to be efficient in what we do. Maybe that also applies to you, to be more efficient and thoughtful and caring of the, your resources, internal and external. What you do with yourself and what you do with the things that are around you that you believe are supporting you and giving you strength. One of the things that's helping me right now is having routines because there's a lot of chaos in my life as is not unique to me but all of our lives all over the world. So what helps me is to find corners of order. For me that might mean that I put the laundry away as soon as my wife gives it to me, not always in case she's listening, I've got to be honest. But finding those corners of neatness and of order in my day and in my life, it's making lists, it's going through my lists and putting check marks by them to give me a sense of accomplishment and clarity and a sense that I've moved from A to B to C ultimately to maybe E or F. And I think it's also finding things that we do that we routinize Maybe it's reading, maybe it's every day saying, for 10 minutes I'm going to read. Maybe I don't do that often enough or I do it randomly. But maybe it's saying for during this period in life, 10 or 20 minutes every day, I'm going to read something good. It'll be a good distraction from some of the thoughts and narratives that I'm building in my head. And maybe I'll discover some wonderful literature along the way. Maybe it's having a commitment to a corner of neatness and order, which is exercise. Every day, if it isn't building muscle, it's stretching the muscles that you already have. It's starting the day or ending the day on the floor of your room if you're able without falling to the floor of your room. To be able to find ways of doing yoga stretches or just simple, healthy, calm stretches with good breath. Maybe it's doing art. Maybe it's making one single call every single day as a commitment to somebody else whom you know is desperate for your ear and your voice, whose smile will bright, brighten and broaden when they hear your voice on the telephone. Maybe it's thinking about the future in a way that you never have, but doing it in a way that's regular and routine. It might be writing in a diary of thoughts, hopes, and dreams, of plans for one year from now, and if that's too difficult, then five years from now, and if that's just too difficult, 10 years from now. Asking yourself at various ages in your life, what do I want to do and what do I want to be? What are ways in which I want to grow? So again, as I'm looking at this camera, I'm looking beyond it at the green and the yellow and the red and the pink and all the colors around me. 
and realizing I needed wisdom, not mine, somebody else's, to be able to use the resources that I have better than I knew how. I hope this is helpful to you.